So during the late 80s, uh, everybody was installing Cat 5 cable as soon as 10 base T came out and used Cat 3 cable because they thought FDDI was coming and they wanted the future. What happened to that and why? What happened to that in what regard? Why did FDEI essentially never arrive in the market in Uh For cap? For, for, for the copper? For, or for fiber? Yes. Well, it did in fiber to the applications where fiber was legitimate. You know, the, there were metropolitan area networks that were built with it and so forth. But it, it was going to be the backbone network for all of Ethernet. That sort of. Well, because didn't happen, and that's why 100 base T happened. I kind of think it was the other way around. 100 base T happened, so it didn't. It didn't happen. I mean, FDDI, uh, as much as it was an openly developed standard, was still complicated. You had to have a software layer to make the token management part of the system work. Um, there were huge interoperability issues that you ran into because it wasn't all one vendor doing the technology. Uh, when I was at AMD, we had this advanced networking test center we, we funded and put in place so that the vendors could come in and test the interoperability of their products. That was a huge barrier in the market, yeah. Didn't that become sort of through several evolutions uh, what we now know as Sonnet? I don't think so. No. I'm not that Which familiar with it. Dramatically, it's radically just, different. It's a counter rotating fiber ring running at optical. Yeah, completely different. Sonnet, Sonnet predates uh, FTDI, and it is a TDM technology. Right. So now FTDI was not the basis for Sonnet. Okay. Nor, nor was Sonnet the basis for, for FTDI. One observation I'll have I, whether it was Ethernet got there or FTDI didn't. I think you sort of ran into the same thing that Dot Five did, which is it was just bloody complicated. You know, the whole station management software stack, and there were a couple of folks who I have to say seemed to love complexity. <laughs> and so it was it was that great thing of we're not going to publish a standard until we have solved every imaginable problem under every possible use case. And the thing just got to be so heavy that it sort of collapsed under its own weight. And SMT took about two and a half technology lifetimes to get out the door. Would, fair fair yeah, comment? Yeah, I, I would agree that's fair. It's one of the blessings of having consultants support uh, standards activities because they like to see things go on and on and on. <laughs> um, but it was complicated. And I think part of the problem was that <clears throat> the group in general didn't realize the complexity they were signing up to getting into it. And they had to work through all of these things. You dealt with issues of timing synchronization between all of the devices in the network. Just a whole plethora of things. And then you had FDDI2 in the wings, which was going to be a slotted architecture, uh, sort of muddying the waters a little bit. Probably didn't have that much of an effect on it. But um, yeah, it was, it was bloody complicated. Our initial implementation was a five chip set. And you know you're not going to build anything very inexpensively with five chips, you know, a mixture of bipolar and they were all going to be bipolar in the first place. But then CMOS came along, thank God. Otherwise, it never would have come out. But you know, it was complicated. And we, you know, really the light went on when people started delivering 100 meg over copper and twisted pair of copper, not just you know fat coax or anything. And at that point in time, it was pretty clear what was going to win. I think until that happened, token ring and Ethernet, as much as as they were competitors, they could coexist in the ecosystem with a high-speed backbone. But once that happened, then I think uh, it was the nail in the coffin. The, uh, I, the IBM participation in FDDI came out of Poughkeepsie, so it was mainframe. And I once saw the board, the adapter card that they were building for that. It was two feet by two feet. <laughs> I don't know if they ever got it running. Yeah. Go ahead. And that was the hardware. That was the hardware.